Hello there, Cancers. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this video finds you well. And um, before I start with this reading, um, I just want to say a few things here. I feel like the main energy for this month, uh, you know, we do have a Mercury retrograde um, that started on the 18th of February and it's going to continue, um, especially through the first week of this month. And so what Mercury retrograde does for you guys, and uh, I'm seeing it here in this spread, is that it's going to make you walk down memory lane, okay? Not physically, but I feel like emotionally. It's going to drag up a few things from your past that you might not have uh, reconciled with. Um, and it's going to, I, I guess, like trigger some of those um, events, some of those uh, circumstances in the past that you felt like things could have, you know, taken a different turn. Things could have turned out a, um, uh, in a different way. Um, things could have been different, okay? So you're going to go through, especially the first week, um, through this period of like, a, it's a slump, okay? It's a walk down memory lane. It's going to evoke some of those feelings that uh, might not be completely pleasant, okay? So I guess the challenge for you guys for this month is to kind of like come to terms with them. And if it makes you uncomfortable thinking about it, just ask yourself like, you know, why is it making me uncomfortable? Why am I suppressing it? Why am I not, um, uh, I, I guess like, why am I not able to release it? Why does it make me feel comfortable every time it comes up? Okay, so I feel like you have some murky waters that you need to kind of like uh, plug up your nose and just kind of uh, brace for impact and just walk through. And once you go through that process of emotional purging, um, you're going to realize that, you know what, they're just thoughts, they're just words, they're just events in the past. They can't really hurt me anymore. Um, the whole concept about discomfort um, is coming through. Discomfort, displacement, um, no longer being in an environment where you feel familiar, where you feel safe. Not that it's a, it's you're unsafe in a physical way, but it's it's sort of like you have changes that are brewing. You have changes that are coming, and so you kind of need to kind of purge this emotional past. So that you can kind of move on and meet and, and face your future head on. Does that make sense? So the whole concept of, concept about discomfort um, comes up, and it's um, every time there's a thought, every time there's a situation, every time you think about a person, and if it triggers you in a way where you feel uncomfortable, you kind of need to ask yourself, you know, why does it make me feel so comfortable, uncomfortable? Does it um, reveal a weakness within me that I need to be aware of? Okay, because I, I do see that coming through. Does it reveal an aspect of myself that I might not have been made aware of? Does it reveal something about me that I need to come to terms with? Because a lot of the times when we're dealing with another person and our inter um, interpersonal interaction with another person, it reveals a lot about us. Okay, and the, the things sometimes that we dislike or we find like repulsive in another person, uh, if we dig deeper, I feel like there's some underlying, um, I guess like um, similarities between that person and us that we want to kind of purge from ourselves, okay? And that's why these are like trigger points. And so realizing you know why does that person make me feel so uncomfortable why was that situation so uncomfortable for me to think about uh, will really help you it, it's like you have an aversion for something you don't want to think about it but actually thinking about it sorting through your feelings sorting through how you feel about the situation and what within you is being i guess like triggered or poked at or prodded at um I am sensing that it will reveal a lot to you about, you know, letting go of this or purging this or, or, or really understanding yourself and why these things have been such trigger points for you in the past, okay? So I would say like the first week of um, March, it's not going to be completely, um, I, I want to say smooth, okay? On the emotional front, I don't feel that it's going to be smooth. However, as we progress through the month of March, 
you're going to be in a much better frame of mind and you're going to feel so much better so much lighter and the purging needs to happen in order for you to feel lighter and I feel for many of you it is emotional purging uh, for many of you it is like uh, physically purging belonging stuff that has accumulated okay uh, ways of dealing with people or even like unhealthy coping habits that you've been resorting to as well so I do feel like there's a lot here to be said about growth about self-awareness about really understanding yourself and realizing where your strengths and your weaknesses lie so that you can work to fortify your weaknesses and you can work to enhance your strength okay so it's all about self-care it's all about self-awareness it's all about you know grooming the self in, in preparation for all the really wonderful good things that you have coming for you. So the way that I look at this reading, it seems like this, okay? Honestly, everything that is over here is phenomenal, okay? We do have these two cards that um, they're, they're coming out very early on in the spread, so I feel like their energy can feel a little bit heavy. So these are emotionally heavy cards. And then if you can, you know, find yourself kind of like bouncing above this or, or overcoming this, everything here looks very promising, all right? Um, when I was shuffling out this uh, spread for you, I saw an image. And um, it looks to me like a gas station back in the 60s, 60s, 70s. Um, so I see this young man, he's driving like an Oldsmobile, like it's um, it's a really, really old car, but he painted it red and uh, you know, he takes really good care of it. He's giving it like premium grade um, gasoline and he's very young too. So he looks like he's about 20 and he's wearing like um, uh, just a, 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 it's not super clean, but just a white simple shirt and he's wearing like, you know, pants and suspenders. He's got a little uh, hat on. So he's like polishing the car, he's putting gas in it, and um, it's like, it, it's very shiny, it's shimmering. It seems to me like it might be a car that his dad passed down to him, or his grandpa passed down to him. But either way, I feel like, you know, for someone who's so young, he has such a beautiful car, it seems like it's passed down to him. And so it has sentimental value, so he's at a gas station pumping gas. And then uh, there's this, another man, older possibly in his 50, kind of haughty, kind of like stuck up looking. And the man admires the car and then he approaches the young man. And he was all like, how much you want for that car? And the man's like, oh, it's not for sale. And he goes back to pumping gas. And the older man was all like, I'll give you, you know, 5,000 for it. And the guy was like, sir, it's not for sale. And he goes, I'll give you, you know, 6,000. He goes, no. And then the guy keeps upping the price, like 7000 And the young man tries to ignore him. And the older man, he's kind of like getting kind of upset, getting feeling like he's um, ignored, uh, feeling undermined, feeling like, you know, why don't you want my money? Things like that. And so I, I feel a little bit of a standoff, like a little bit of a confrontation between these two people. And it's done in a very subtle way. And the older man is thinking, well, everyone has a price, you know. There's a price for everything. And then um, the young man just keeps ignoring him and he goes about his business wiping the car and, and while the gas is filling up. And the older man was all like, well, everyone has a price. He tells the young man that and the young man was all like, this is not for sale. Or, you know, like, I'm not for sale. Or I don't have a price. Okay? So when I saw this, I was thinking, you know, you're you're pretty much like the young man okay and um the, the the mentality here is that you know there's a situation that you're not really compromising on okay so it could be like a negotiation a bartering process where somebody is trying to get the best deal and i feel like you're very fixed about what you will or will not compromise on and you're very fixed about what you will or will not tolerate or you're very fixed about where you stand okay it's like i will not budge from this position so it, it's it's very much about uh defending your territory not letting people walk all over you but at the same time um the underlying message here is you're you're staying true to yourself 
and you're realizing there are some things that money really can't buy okay and so when I saw that scene, I feel like the energy is played out in both of these cards. So first of all, we have here the Ten of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles. And let me talk about these two cards in tandem because I, I feel like for many of you, uh, you're going through this very reflective, um, introspective mode and you're trying to, you know, you're, you're looking at events from the past. You're looking at everything that you have done, okay? He's got a broom in his uh, hand little red broom right there and it's like cleanup okay major cleanup major repairs major like um overhaul okay like um um i, I feel like it's it's cleanup cleaning up the pieces of your life cleaning up a, a situation that has gone astray cleaning up a situation that has gone awry cleaning up after a um potentially like an aftermath of some event that was not completely desirable okay cleanup is messy Cleanup is, um, it, no one wants to do it, honestly. And so I feel like the, there's a situation here where something needed to be clean up, cleaned up. And you've gone through that process of cleaning up and you're sitting still contemplating and trying to figure out, you know, what was that all about? What could, could I learn from it? Why did it happen? Why did these events um, happen the way in, in which they did? And, you know, how do I ensure that it doesn't happen again in the future? I feel like there might have been a falling out, okay, between you and another person. I have here the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords is sort of like being very hurt by the actions and the words and um, uh, uh, that, that somebody, it's, it's like somebody saying something or doing something to you that is very, very hurtful, okay? And with the Ten of Swords, it's like, you know, whoever that's launching the swords, they have 10 tries and they hit the target every single time. So it feels like it's very personal. It feels like very directed. And it feels like, I feel like somebody really hurt you. Somebody might have said things that really triggered you. Somebody might have aimed for your weak spot. Somebody might have, you know, kind of like hit below the belt or targeted you in a way where it was very directed it was very purposeful and it was done in a way that was like there's no coming back from it there's no no way to say oh i'm sorry and and make the situation go away there's no reviving this situation there's nothing that anyone can do now to make all the pieces come back together and so I feel like there was a situation in your uh, life that has, you know, ended and it, it, it ended on a, in a pretty crappy way. And so you're looking at the aftermath. You're looking at, you know, why did this person do what they did? Why did they behave in such a manner? What did I do to deserve this? And um, are they aware of how much they've hurt me? Are they aware of, um, you know, how sensitive I am? Because, um, Cancers, you guys are very deeply sensitive. And that is why you don't go out of your way to hurt anybody. Because you understand that, you know, words can cut and, and, and words can't be rescinded. They can't be taken back. And so I feel like you're contemplating and, and trying to understand the situation. Why did they say such hurtful things? Why did they do what they did? Um, you know, you're, you're struggling to try to understand, like, why was this? Why did they take it so personally? Or why am I even taking this so personally? And what you have to understand, though, is um, I feel like, you know, there was a situation here where somebody's ego was at stake. Okay, somebody's like, um, somebody either felt very um, ignored, somebody either felt very undermined, kind of like that man, you know, it's like, I'm here, I'm trying to make you a, um, a, 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 an offer, and you're not even listening to me, you're turning away, and, and things like that, and I feel like you were dealing with somebody, and whatever you told them, they couldn't take no for an answer, okay? It's like telling them no multiple times. And you guys in general are not super assertive. 
But when you say no, and then they refuse to acknowledge your no, or they refuse to accept it, I feel then you know you 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 start to ignore it. And then I also feel like this person was like fighting for attention. This person wanted to be the center of attention. This person wanted to make themselves heard. This person felt ignored. They felt overlooked. They they felt like it was really affecting their ego. And so whatever was directed at you, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them and their insecurities. Okay, not being able to hold their own, not being able to um, you know talk to you like an adult, not being able to kind of.、Um, Approach you in a serious manner, and in the spirit of you know resolving things rather than just、um, blindly attacking you. So I feel like there is a situation here, and no matter how much you try to、um, you know kind of like go over the events in your head,、um, I feel like there wasn't another way that that there wasn't another outcome that could have come out of this.、Um, you did what you had to do. And I feel like whatever was whatever you know toxic venom that was thrown at from the other party, I feel like they 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 did that out of a space of weakness, and they would have done this to anybody and not just you. But they felt like they were being ignored by you. They felt like you were weren't giving them the time of day, and it really upset them. And that's when they kind of spew venom, and so. Looking at the situation, the best thing to do is、uh, not to try to understand another person's motives. Okay,、um, a lot of the times we want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. We want to, you know, believe that well, people are all kind and sweet and and helpful. But I feel like in this situation, it's stirring some really, really deep-rooted insecurities within the other person, and so their emotional reaction was not rational. And so, trying to you know understand it, trying to make sense of it, I feel like it it might not be the right way to go about it. Okay, like why did they say these hurtful things to me? Why did they behave in that way? And their actions was not coming from a space of rationality. So don't try to wrap your head around it. Okay, it, it doesn't make sense. Does that does that sound like? I'm making sense. So, aside from this little tidbit, I feel like it's a conflict. It's done and over with. There's nothing to be repaired. Okay, there, there, nothing can be done. Nothing can be repaired. Nothing can be fixed. Nothing can be salvaged. So it, it's a done deal. And because it's a done deal, we kind of need to move on. Okay. So Ten of Swords. This is an ending here. A major relationship, a major situation has a major phase in your life even has kind of like ended. You're doing the cleanup. You're dealing with the aftermath. You're still you've already cleaned up. You've already kind of like moved away from it. But I feel like you know every now and and again in the first week of、uh, March, memories will get triggered, events will trigger and and bring you back to that emotional space. And don't try to make sense of it. Okay, do your cleanup.、Uh, resolve this situation within yourself, and and move past it. Because what you're, what is right behind you, and you're kind of turning your back to is we have the Ace of Wands, and then we also have as well the King of Swords. Okay, so this indicates to me a lot of, a lot of new energies that are in store for you. That you need to be facing head on, okay? The Ace of Wands usually indicates some type of a new project, something that is very phenomenal, something that you can kind of like carry into your future with you. It's a the the Wands energy is a torch, okay? It's like something that is、uh, exciting and fun and passionate, and you know you you're gonna feel very committed and very driven. A lot of the times, too, it's like a, a whoosh, like a, a really fast, swift energy that denotes changes, forward movement, momentum, and it happens really, really fast. So while you're mulling over the situation, if you're too caught up in the past, this opportunity might slip you by. So you need to be very quick on the uptake, and you need to be physically looking at it, reacting to it, and grabbing it right when it comes in. Because, like I said, this is very fast, and it's a 
is it an element that is counter to yours? It's a fire energy, you're a water sign, and so you need to be very decisive, okay? And the King of Swords, this is a message here about, you know, being very, very discerning and being very decisive. Um, let's be honest, Cancers, um, I feel like decisiveness is not really your strong suit, okay? And um, the best way that I that I can explain this, and I, I don't know if you might relate to this, but what I feel is like with the um, Cancerian people, you know how if you look at the night sky, right? Every night, the moon, it, it changes its shape, okay? So it's like um, it, it grows bigger and bigger from a crescent moon into a full moon, and then it, it waxes, right? It, it, it reverts back to a crescent uh, shape, and then it disappears. And so the, the phases of the moon changes, the, the shape of the moon changes from one night to the next. And I feel like with um, Cancerian people, you know, you're ruled by the moon, that's your ruling planet. And it can be a little bit frustrating to really figure out what you want, to really be 100% sure about what you want. Believe it or not, other signs don't have the same problem. They're very decisive. They know with every fiber in their being what they want to do, what they want to say yes to, what they want to accept. But I feel like for you guys, um, figuring out that 100% certainty has been like an uphill battle. And I feel like even when you are you really want something, you're never 100% sure. And I feel like from one day to the next, you know, your, your feelings, your emotions, your sense of decisiveness, it fluctuates. And so there might have been like a lot of opportunities where you're kind of like mulling things over and then before you know it, the, the opportunity slips you by. And there might have been times where you're just kind of like thinking about all the missed opportunities, all the things that slip you by while you were waiting to make a decision. And so, so the, the message here is life is accelerating. It's not going to stop. And, and, and life is not going to put itself on hold on account of any human being, on account of a mortal. Life happens. We need to roll with the punches. And so taking the time to mold things over is definitely, you know, something that everyone should do. However, I feel like there has been missed opportunities, multiple missed opportunities. While life was throwing you curveballs, while you were distracted with other things, I felt like the more important things really slipped away. And so for the month of March, we are reminded here with the King of Swords, this is the energy about being decisive. This is sort of like looking at the past and just realizing, you know what, that doesn't serve me any purpose, wallowing in self-pity, I'm going to cut that off. And using that sword of truth here and slicing that out. And then looking towards the future, here's a good opportunity for me that will make me tremendously happy. Queen of Cups, look how ecstatic she is. This is kind of like finding that space of perfect equilibrium where you're feeling very emotionally hopeful and happy and satiated and you have all your needs met. So I feel like there's something coming through that has a lot of potential that will make you really, really happy. And this is where your energy, your, 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 your frame of mind should be focused. And so you have to be aware of the tendency to kind of like um, wallow in this situation and then moving away from that, recognizing when it happens. Recognizing the heavy, um, the heaviness associated with it so that whenever that heaviness creeps in and you start to feel it in your being, right? You want to shake it off and move yourself here, okay? So this is all about knowing ourselves really well, knowing what, um, how we feel, knowing what's not good for us, knowing what we need to move away from and knowing what we need to kind of like embrace and focus on and, and you know, um, focus our energy and our resources on because there is a lot of room for growth, okay? So the Empress is all about that. Being really um, in charge and secure within yourself. The Empress is about abundance. It's about creation and it's also about light. It's somebody who's very nurturing, very caring. And whenever I think of a Cancerian person, I, I think of the Empress because the Cancerian person 
they will invite you know guests to their home they will feed their guests they will make sure everyone is comfortable everyone's happy everyone is thoroughly fed and it's like being very gracious being um a, a really good hostess but really caring about another person's well-being really caring that the person has enough to eat really caring that the person is you know um, not suffering suffering from the cold and the heat or the chills of the elements. So I feel like there's a lot of opportunities here where you are in charge, you're going to be either taking care of people or you know making sure that people are well taken care of. And so I feel like there's some project here that are in the works for you that will make you really happy. It's kind of like right up your alley and it speaks to um, it, it will it will require you to tap into all the skills that you're very proud of within yourself. You know, being a good caretaker, um, being of service to other people, being in an environment where you can, you know, make a situation better for a group of people, for humanity in some way. So I feel like it's not ego driven. It's, it, it's, it's a position or a, a situation where you can put all your skills to good use. And this is where your energy needs to be focused, okay? Um, you have two aces here. Oops, sorry. You have the ace of wands, which is new projects, okay? Something that's coming in very, very fast. Very, very fast. And it comes, it, it's catching you unaware as I'm feeling. And then we have as well the ace of swords and two aces. And the ace of swords is about being decisive. It's about figuring out what you want it's about being clear with yourself about what you want. It's about being decisive and not waffling back and forth. And then telling yourself, you know, it, I, I just feel like one day you're just like very gung-ho about it. You're very like much on board. And then the next day, the self-doubt creeps in. What ifs? What if this? What if that? Um, and so I, I just feel like you can be 100% decisive one day and then the next day you're kind of waffling back and forth. And so this is pretty much, you know, telling yourself, choose something and commit to that course of action until that course of action has run dry. I feel for many of you, um, I feel for many of you, this could also be like a relationship situation where from one day to the next the relationship is like an emotional roller coaster okay and when the high when, when it's like at a high point it's really good and you're just like i want to marry this person and then when the emotional um there's like an emotional dip or when you know there's like a, it's at a low point you're just like i want to break off this relationship and so things are very extreme, okay? Things are very like, much like from one day to the next, it's very extreme. And I feel like, you know, your emotions, your feelings are changed based on, based on things that are, you feel though it's outside of your control, but what I'm sensing here is there are certain things that we need to be decisive about, okay? And there are things that we need to anticipate. Life is not going to be a bed of roses. Life, it, I almost feel like, you know, this energy about romanticizing things too much, wanting everything to be rainbow and lollipop. I feel like you're smart enough to understand that there are always going to be high and lows, okay? But in the end, like at the end of the day, everything balances it out. But I feel like for many of you, when the high is really high, you're kind of like caught up in that emotional high and you're trying to recreate it. And so when the situation hits an emotional low, you feel like you can't handle. You feel like you can't, you don't want to be in it. You feel like you can't handle it. And so what I'm sensing is when it's an emotional high, take it for what it is. And, you know, um, understand that there will always be good days. There will be always be bad days. And don't let those bad days dictate how you feel. Don't let those bad days um, get you into a negative uh, space. So emotional moderation is, is, is one thing. But also being realistic enough to know that there are always going to be ups and downs. In life, at work, in relationships, in all your interpersonal dealings. And so as a result of that, realizing that and recognizing it, I feel it's going to make things um, a lot more realistic 
okay, a, a lot more manageable, so that your emotional、um, state is not rattled every single time. Okay, so it, it's it's like don't measure don't measure a situation based on all the emotional highs and lows, because the the way you measure something, it's gonna fall somewhere in between. Okay, because at the end of the day. Those emotional highs and low will calibrate, and they'll they'll even out. And so, don't measure how you feel about a situation, about a job, about a person. Don't measure the past, especially based on those emotional highs and lows. Take them all in their totality. Okay.、Um, I do feel like there's going to be a lot of communication coming through. Okay. So we have here the messenger, page of swords. Okay. This is like somebody with envelopes, like. Physical mail that you are getting at your at your door, okay? Packages, mail, communication, emails, text messages,、uh, phone calls, and and things like that. Keep your phone charged. Keep, make sure that your、um, 